Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com and we'd love to talk to you about either hosting your telescope in our observatory or if you'd like to rent some imaging time on our telescopes, we have that available as well. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about managing stars. I had some questions uh, with some pictures I posted on Facebook the other day. Uh, in particular, this comparison of the uh, elephant trunk nebula in both RGB and narrowband uh, SHO. And the comments were about the stars and they were nice and small and colorful and, and how did I do that? So I want to take a few minutes today to talk through the process. Basically, star management or reducing stars is a challenge that people have been working with for some time. Uh, as you brighten the background, you're also brightening the stars, so the stars tend to get too bright and bloated and just kind of overwhelm the nebula that's in the background. So the basic principle that we want to do is to try to manage the stars separately from the nebula and the software that's available now, such as StarNet and Star Exterminator that use artificial intelligence to remove the stars from the images give us some great tools to do that. But, but there are some tricks that I think will help you. So what I'm going to show you is using a combination of PixInsight and Photoshop. Uh, in particular, pay attention to the concepts or the ideas that I'm using more so than the exact steps that I go through in PixInsight or in Photoshop. Uh, the idea is basically to get a, a layer of nice, small, tight, colorful stars and overlay that onto a, a bright, colorful nebula to get the best of both worlds. So with that, let's start in PixInsight. And I am going to use this RGB version of the elephant trunk as the example. So let me close this. So in PixInsight, I can just double click here in the, the window to open images. And you'll notice I have a few icons over here on the right that we'll be using. And what I want to do, I have already done the calibration and integration. And when that's done, I have a, a folder called uh, PI swap files, which is the PixInsight uh, working directory. And that happens to be on my D drive. And we can go there to the folder that I used for the elephant trunk. And you'll see a collection of folders, logs, calibrated, registered, um, and master, and you may see a debayer or some other folders as well. If we go to the folder called master, this is where the output lives. And here, the last three images, in fact, are the red, green, and blue from the elephant trunk. So I can select those three and click open. And that will open these three. These are stacked, calibrated, uh, but not stretch. So I haven't done anything other than just the, the basic uh, WBPP processing. So the first thing I generally do is go to the channel combination and just grab the red into the red channel, green into the green channel, blue into the blue channel, and click the red circle and that will generate a new image that this is the combined RGB image now. And we don't need our original red, greens, and blues anymore. So I'll just close those to clean up the workspace a little bit. And let's just do a quick screen stretch to see what this looks like. And you may find the colors are a little wonky. You may need to run a dynamic background extraction or something on it. But that's basically what's there. And I do want to run a quick DBE on this. So I'll I have a saved configuration of dynamic background extraction that you may notice there's just some very large sample points around the perimeter. And 95% of the time, those work fine. They, they seem to not land on bright stars and they don't land on the nebula most of the time. I have some kind of what were called relaxed uh, parameters here. So I can just execute this and it'll do a quick extraction. Close that and already we can see it looks better. And at this point, I'm just going to make a quick copy of this image. Just choose duplicate <clears throat> and then we'll minimize this as an icon and store it down here on the lower left. 
first thing I want to do is just basic stretch thinking more about the nebula than the stars. And I'll do that just with the screen transfer function. Uh, let's get a quick look at it since it's been run through DBE. And that doesn't look too bad. Uh, for my taste, it's a little bit bright in the background, especially. So what I will tend to do is use the plus and minus keys to kind of zoom in on the section between the black slider and the midtone slider, and then grab the arrow key and we can darken the background a little bit and maybe lighten the foreground. And we'll just grab the histogram transformation, drag the settings down to the histogram transformation click the square to apply those and then we'll now need to turn off the screen stretch and there's our image that we'll, that we'll use for the nebula and typically what I'll do then is run noise exterminator on that and you know, kudos to Russell Croman for putting these together and this this is like magic uh, it knocks out the noise and very little, if any, impact on the nebula and other detail. I tend to use it pretty much on all of my images uh, with the default 90% reduction. So with that run, we still have very nice stars, a little on the big side, uh, but it's knocked out the noise. Next thing I'll do is run Star Exterminator. And this may or may not leave some um, artifacts on, in the image, especially after you've stretched it and we have these fairly large bright stars, uh, we may find that not all the stars actually get removed. Uh, and we can work with that in Photoshop, that's not a big deal. Uh, there are some caveats to remember and we'll talk about those. But it's done a pretty good job, but if we zoom in, we will see that there are some, some artifacts where it left kind of a smoothed area where it didn't reduce, didn't remove the star and put in something in its place. And we also now can really see that we've got this diffraction spike from a, a bright star that's out of the field of view here. Uh, and again, we'll deal with those in Photoshop. So this gives us our nebula image. And now let's look at the one duplicate that we saved earlier. And this has a screen stretch on it, so I'll turn that off. So this is the starting point. And for the stars, if you recall, what we want to do is produce kind of a, a darker version focusing on just the stars. And I find that the arc sine H stretch, the inverse hyperbolic sine, is a good starting point. Uh, we do have to create a real-time preview. And then we can drag the stretch to the right and I usually just do a quick estimate black point. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it needs a little more. But you can see right away that these are nice, tight, colorful stars. Uh, there are tools <clears throat> that you can download for Photoshop to do an arc sine stretch. Uh, you can probably find it in a lot of the other normal processing tools. If you go too far with this, sometimes you can get some odd looking results. Uh, We'll say this is good for now, so I'll apply this. Sometimes I will go back and fine tune the result. This is the resulting image now. We, we turned off the real time preview and, and I closed the arc sine H dialog box. So this is our image and we'll just go with this for now. So I would do the same thing. I would run noise exterminator to knock out any noise in clean things up. Again, this just works like magic. The other thing that we're going to do differently, though, is we'll go to Star Exterminator, and this time I'm going to open up the dialog box and check the option to generate a star image. And then we'll execute this. And what this is going to do is create an image with just the stars that are extracted. And the nice thing about that is they're going to be on a pure black background rather than on a, an almost black or a dark gray background. And that makes it much easier to combine things in Photoshop. So here we have our star image. Here we have the image that the stars were extracted from. And we don't really need this anymore, so I'll just close it. And we're done with the arc sign H. So now we have two files that we're going to work with. One 
with just the stars on a black background and one with just the background and no stars. And what I would do now is save these as a 16-bit TIFF and then open them in Photoshop. And so let's hop over to Photoshop where I actually already have files opened. And I have three files here. One shows the stretched image with somewhat large stars. And then we have the starless image and the image with just the stars. Now normally I would open these using file, scripts, load files into stack. But sometimes it's useful to open them independently, especially if they're coming from different places, uh, or if you already have one and you want to load the other one. What seems to work best is just to load it as a separate image and then grab the Move tool, which you can also just tap the V key for the Move tool. And then we want to just drag this over on top of the background. And to do that, I'll just click in the picture area, drag up to the tab that has the stretched image, drag down into the image area. A lot of gymnastics here. Hold the shift key to tell it that we wanted to drop it at the same place that we took it from, and then let go of the mouse and the shift key. And what that does is it places it kind of in register on top of the image below. Now to bring out the stars, since it's sitting on top and by default they're in normal blending mode, which means it just overlays what's below. And we really want just the stars from this layer. So what I'll do is switch this from the normal blending mode into screen blending mode. And what that does is it lets the stars lighten what's below, <clears throat> but because it's on a purely black background, the background doesn't have any effect. And if we compare that quickly to the image without managing the star size, you can see there's quite a difference. Now, some other things that we can do, because these are on separate layers, we can turn the stars on and off. We've got some of these artifacts from the uh, diffraction spikes from the star that was out of the field that we might want to deal with. This part of it is pretty easy to deal with because it's just on a black background. So we can use the uh, healing brush or clone stamp, or you know, we can be pretty crude in how we, how we address that. And I would typically add a new layer above this background layer, and then grab the healing brush. And there are actually two healing brushes. There's a spot healing brush and a healing brush. I usually find the healing brush works better and it works like the clone stamp tool that you will hold the alternate key and select a source point. And I have it set to sample from the current image and below. I can use the left and right bracket keys to make the, the destination spot larger. And then we basically just paint out those offending areas. Now, some of these other areas are a little bit trickier because there is other detail below them. But, but if we look at what's happening, generally what we see is it's really just making this area brighter than it needs to be. So the detail is still there, it's just too bright. But if we try to go after this with the clone stamp tool, it's going to start messing up the, uh, the underlying detail. We don't want to change the detail, we just want to make it darker. So to do that, we're going to do what's called burning and dodging. And burning is the process of making the image in that area darker. Dodging makes it lighter. Uh, by the way, while we've got it zoomed in, you can see these artifacts from the stars. Generally, when you turn the star layer on, those just kind of magically disappear and aren't a problem. So these areas with the diffraction spikes from outside the frame are a little bit of a problem. Those, those don't go away. So we do want to fix those. And to fix those, I'm going to add another blank layer. And then this time, I'm going to put this blank layer in soft light blending mode. And what that does is if I grab the brush tool, tap D, this is in the way over here, I tapped D to, for the default foreground and background colors. And 
we are at a fairly low opacity of 10%. And what we want to do is paint with this brush tool. If we paint black, let's just go to 100% opacity. And I'll move somewhere where we can see. If I paint with black, you can see it darkens the underlying layer quite a bit. If I paint with white, which I can get by just tapping the X key, it lightens what's underneath. So that was at 100% opacity. If we back this down to 10% opacity, which you can you can use the slider or you can just tap the one key for 10%, two would be 20%, three, 30%, and so forth. Then we can work with it kind of slowly and gradually. And if I paint with black, it will let me darken those areas. And I can kind of work slowly with 10% opacity and just gradually darken them so that they blend in with the background. And if I turn this on and off, you can see the effect that it's had. And then we'll work our way down here and do the same thing, just darkening these streaks and this is a good example where there is underlying detail that we don't want to obliterate. We just want to darken the streak. So if I turn this layer on and off, and remember I'm not painting color on here, I'm just painting brightness and darkness. So the underlying layers detail stays intact. We're just making that area darker. clean this up a little bit down here. And the nice thing about painting with a 10% or sometimes even 5 or 2% opacity is that you can work slowly. If you go too far, you can just tap the X key to switch to the white brush and bring back those areas. Uh, you can also, as long as you're burning and dodging, if you want to highlight areas, for instance, we might go to the white brush. I wish you could see underneath here, but the, this little from the screen recorder is hiding that. Let me go to a partial screen. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. There we go. This is the black and white. And as I tap the X key, you can see it switches between black and white. So if we go to white, and I'm going to blow this back up to full screen. If I paint with the white brush, it's lightening some of this detail. So you can kind of work on an image and bring out areas of detail that might have been hidden or hard to see otherwise. So if I turn this layer on and off, you can see the impact that it had. Not sure I like this. I think I'll knock that back down with the black. If you decide you did something <clears throat> and you don't like it at all, you can always use the eraser tool <clears throat> on that layer and erase just that effect. So for instance, if I grab the eraser tool, make it bigger and erase all of that. So that's basically in a nutshell <clears throat> how we bring the stars in. The trick is to have a s smaller, darker uh, layer of stars than what you started with. But let's go back to PixInsight because you don't always <clears throat> have the option of starting with everything separate. So if I go back to PixInsight and let's go to our original star image, the RGB. And I'm not sure where I put it. We'll just use this one. So if I undo the changes that I made, so <clears throat> let's say this was our starting point. 
and we want to reduce these stars. We'll do somewhat the same thing. What I'll do is clone this image with duplicate. And then I'll run star exterminator. I don't quite have this at full screen. Let's, I would run star exterminator on this image to, re, to take the stars out. Just like we did before. And it takes about 15 seconds. Uh, when I first started doing the uh, starless workflow, I was using StarNet as a standalone, and it did not use the GPU. And it would take about an hour to do each frame. Uh, with the PixInsight and the graphics accelerator, it takes about 15 seconds. So there's our starless layer again. Now this is the star layer, and what we want is nice you know, smaller stars. And a way to do that, you now there's there's a new script available for PixInsight that basically does the process I'm going to do here. Um, what we want to do is darken this image and then extract the stars. So I'll go to Histogram Transformation, and if we choose the, uh, the RGBK slider, we can, I'll have to turn on a preview, by darkening the image you can see the stars are getting darker and I find somewhere in the 70 to 80 percent range works pretty well so now we have a setting that has darkened the stars click apply and then we'll close the histogram transformation close the uh, real-time preview now we'll get star exterminator again generate a star image and apply that and what this is doing is giving us that star image generated from the original nonlinear data uh, so rather than stretching it with arc sine h if you have something that's already stretched and you want to reduce the stars uh, what we did was make a copy of it darken that copy and then extract the stars from that darkened copy so that we have the nice small tight stars uh, you'll notice because this was a uh, screen stretch rather than a, an arc sine stretch uh, that we don't have quite as much intense color in the stars. Uh, you can always put, do a curves transformation and play with the saturation to pull that saturation up a little bit if you want. I do find you typically need more saturation rather than less in the star image. Uh, there's just not a lot of turn on preview. Yeah, there's just not a lot of color in those stars just because of the way they were extracted. Uh, there, there's some um, and some of the problem could be the yeah there's there's some there. Um, So you can, you can play with the hue, saturation, and colors, and so forth of the stars uh, separately once you've extracted them. But the end result is, again, a star layer that has just the stars and a nebula layer that has just the nebula. And then we would do the same thing of going into uh, Photoshop, or if you use Pixel Math, you can use Pixel Math to combine these within uh, PixInsight and have nice, small, colorful stars and a nice nebula for the background. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.